gets his little boy to that to chant. Then Sarukawa Goswami was next. You see, I think that you no, know, because you gave him the mantra, you no know, initiation mantra, you don't speak loud. I think he doesn't want to speak it loud. He's chanting the mantra in his heart. Mm -hmm. But after a few days, Mahaprabhu came back you know, and told him, Purida say something, and Purida spoke this amazing verse in glorification of the gopis. But Krishna had become an ornament of the gopis' heart. Then when Krishna, Mahaprabhu heard this, he said, Oh, you have described in such a complete way. Now, Pura, the glories of Krishna with gopis. So from today, you will not be Purida anymore, you will be Kavi Parvapu. Because he has, he has describing, Oh, Krishna is like an ornament on the ears of the gopis. Krishna is an ornament on the breast of the gopis. Now, a little boy, like seven years old, and he spoke this perfect, no, he perfectly composed Sanskrit verse. And all the great Vaishnavas, they concluded, oh, this power must have come to him from sucking the big toe of Mahaprabhu when he was a baby boy. And when he did, when you read Ananda Vrindavan Shampoo, you just cannot put the book down. More, more, more. Lilas that you have heard about or you read about, like Prabhupada gave him Krishna book like from the Bhagavatam, like a condensed version. When you read the same Lila with so many details, like, wow, Prabhupada only gave us like Zakuski, like appetizer to give us taste to go further into it. If you read, if you read also his no, Krishna Nika Komudi, description of the no, Astakarya Lila, all the Lilas of Krishna that he has. No, during the whole day. It is so at at uh, attractive to the heart. To the mind, you become captivated. When you read from morning, no, when we do Mangalati, we are no, we hearing all this stuff in a very nutshell. Nishantalila, the verses are invoking this Nishantalila. Now the pirates start to speak. Now male pirates and female pirates start to speak to wake up the divine couple. And they speak so amazingly, such a sweet way. One female parrot tells Shumati Radhika, Oh, wake up, you favorite little dear, Rangini. She wants to, she has taken your lotus feet for some new sprouts of grass. So she wants to chew on them. And your sakis, they push her away. But she's very sad because you're not looking at her. She just wants a glance of affection from you. And you know what your you know, dark complexion no, no. Krishna Shyam is doing? He's taking a pearl necklace and he's measuring the eyes of the deer, measuring your eyes and say, Sadhu, Sadhu, very good, yes. My beloved, her eyes are really like a deer's eyes. Very, very sweet, no. Very sweet, sweet description. But still, our Acharya says, because it is no, dealing with no, the absolute truth in a masculine body and female body, there may be some inebriety, some no, contamination due to the past, which may enter in your heart. Therefore, Srila Srila Maharaj says, if you meditate on the leaders of Mahaprabhu, he's a sannyasi. There's no intergender relationship, there's no, no, no hugging, no kissing, no, nothing of the sort. He's a sannyasi and his lilas are the uh, digestible form of Radha Krishna lila for us. We can digest that. Because it's no, it's not Radha Krishna. It's in one body, Mahaprabhu has a very strong sannyasi, very strict sannyasi. No. Mahaprabhu was so strict. One time, one Devadasi she was singing Gita Govinda and Mahaprabhu when he heard it he became so captivated by her beautiful voice and the way she was singing with so much devotion those villas so he started to run towards her you know, completely captivated by the mood and then Govinda you know, ran faster than him and stopped him he said Mahaprabhu this is a woman singing oh he said you saved my life because if I had embraced the body of a woman, I would have died. So, in Mahaprabhu Lila, no equivocal, nothing can be misunderstood. It's very, very strict. At the same time, so purifying. 
and so heart touching. Srila Guruda said, for instance, there is no description in the Bhagavatam of those amazing transformations of the body of Srimati Radhika from Prem. But if Mahaprabhu has experienced them and is in the Radhabhab, it means Srimati Radhika must also have experienced. There's two famous leaders manifesting two no, very opposite symptoms. No, you know that Mahaprabhu, every evening for the last 12 years of his life in the Gambhira, dark room, very small room, Gambhira is very deep, he was trying to dive deep into the mood of Srimati Radhika. And he was always burning inside with a fire of separation. It is said the mood of Radhika, when Udhava came as a messenger from Krishna of Mathura. Now, that mood of Radhika was practically dying of separation. This was a constant mood of Mahaprabhu. He was burning day and night in that fire of separation. And Srila Srila was explained that this fire of separation is much more acute than the pleasure of meeting. Separation is much more no, uh, intense. But although it looks extremely like you know, a terrible thing, it is said this happiness, this pain is dancing on the head of the highest happiness. Very hard to understand. And Krishna Eskala says it, how can you understand in one container poison and nectar? The poison of separation, it described like the fresh bite of a cobra, no, the, the, the pain of a, a cobra which just bit you and his fresh venom is going into your body. Horrible. That's the feeling. And at the same time, you no, know, like hot sugar can juice, so sweet you cannot give it up. So hot you cannot drink it, so sweet you cannot stop to drink it. So those two mixed, but the pain more intense. But that pain actually is another form of happiness. Just like if you know in, in a Chinese conception of yin yang, yin is you no know, uh, cold, for instance. Intense cold becomes turns into heat. You know, something so so cold it burns, right? Intense cold loses its quality of coldness and becomes like fire. You become burnt by the intense cold. So like that, some little idea that extre so extreme it turns into opposite. So so much pain it turns into, into its opposite you know, of the form of ecstasy. So Govinda was always Govinda Das Mahaprabhu's personal servant. He was sleeping outside the room and across so that Mahaprabhu could not come out. And he would lock him inside with big, big locks. And Mahaprabhu would be inside grinding his See, opening is not inside, and immediately calling one of the senior devotees, oh, Mahaprabhu has disappeared, so they're searching everywhere, they're going all over the town, until they see, you know, next to them, they come back, next to the Jagannath temple, they see on the left side, you have the Singhatwar, and left side, you have the horse gate, lion gate, horse gate, and in between, inside the walls, there is a kitchen. And they throw above the wall all the leftover prasadam like that, vegetable, vegetable peels and everything. And the cows, they're always there eating. By the time you go there, it's full of cows, bulls, sometimes fighting. And then they see from distance, there's a whole group of cows, and they're all surrounding something now on the ground. So they, what is that? When they came near, Mahaprabhu's body had become like a big pumpkin. You couldn't see his arms, you couldn't see his head, you couldn't see his leg. Like a tortoise. A big pumpkin or a golden tortoise with all his members, his limbs, which had come inside his body. And the cows were licking that body.
somebody with great affection. So they said, can this be Mahaprabhu? So they started a big kirtan and his head came out, his arms came out, his legs came out. And he started to cry, why you brought me back? I was no witnessing Krishna's lila. Why did you bring me back? And crying piteously like that. So Guru said, we don't have this description in the Bhagavatam, but it must be something that Radhika experienced. On the other extreme, no, instead of no, being no, uh, shrunken, the other end completely expanded. One time also Mahaprabhu disappeared and they couldn't find him anywhere and they became very worried, said maybe drowned in, you know, in ecstasy or something. We cannot find him anywhere. They search, search, search. They couldn't find. And suddenly they saw one you know, fisherman coming and then jumping and rolling on the ground and jumping and crying. I don't know, I don't know. Like that. So Sarita was saying, oh, he must be, he must have seen this symptom. We know where it's from. He must have seen Mahaprabhu. So they tried to speak with the man. What happened? What happened? So they would have slapped him a little bit. Hey, my good man, come, come, come back. Hey, 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 hey. come back. So explain what happened. Well, last night I was you know, fishing at night with a lamp, like they do sometimes in India. You know, to, to attract the fish. I was fishing and I caught one big, big fish in my net. But when I pulled it on the board, I realized it was not a fish, it was a corpse, a dead body. And I said, Instead of all the body being shrunk inside, the opposite, every articulation, every joint was dislocated and it was like maybe one inch between each. Like his whole body had become so long, 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 long. Every joint was dislocated, that space in between, just the skin holding. And then again, But he went back like that. So all those symptoms, they said, Shemati Vatika must also have those symptoms. Well, Guru Dhan, did he say like that? No, I heard that he said sh This you know, Swarup Shakti, which gives this transcendental happiness. It's like the body is too small to contain the soul. Therefore, you have those symptoms. And technically speaking, they describe that. The scripture, like the soul is too, is, no, it's too big for the body and therefore those symptoms manifest. So Mahaprabhu, it is mentioned that sometime in his body, all the eight symptoms at the same time will manifest. Like a, a sugar, as we mentioned the other day, like a sugar cane field, which was, 
The Shiri can feel which was no devastated by an elephant, a mad elephant going in sugar can feel. The body of Mahaprabhu was like that. Sugar can feel and the elephants of different type of ecstasy devastating his body with all those symptoms. Also he said two things. Usually devotees will manifest one, two, three symptoms, but Mahaprabhu manifested all of them. And also the other avatars of the Lord. You know, they may give the devotee you know, the ecstasy to manifest one or two symptoms. But Mahaprabhu, he was giving his devotees the ecstasy to manifest also all the symptoms, like himself. Nijat Gurta Vitam, his own personal wealth, he was distributing. Not only he was experiencing, but he was making his devotees experience. And Guru Gav says, this is not something of the past. The only difference is that at that time, no sadhana was needed to experience that. Mahaprabhu was given freely by his very presence. Simply by looking at him or being embraced by him, one would experience that. The difference now is that we have to do sadhana to purify our heart and be able to experience those very symptoms. That's the difference. Otherwise, there is this famous verse, no, Yajyapi Seilila Kono no, Gororai Kono Kono Bhagavan Deki Bharipai. Today, also, no, Mahaprabhu is having his lilas, and Kono Kono Bhagavan, those who are fortunate, they can still see today those lilas happening. Um, so we have to understand that if we want those things to become ours, because this is our goal, we have to follow the particular sadhana or those families have told us. Now, this cannot come simply by intellectualism. This is not a fruit of you know, reading. The human will clear the heart, but we have to do the sadhana. We will have to intensely practice you know, under anugatya, never independently, always confirming all practices or realizations or understanding with our holy masters. Otherwise, all this will remain very beautiful dreams, beautiful stories, how, how wonderful this is now, so amazing, but it will not become ours unless we do the sadhana which will give this other fruit. Sadhana, he said, said, now sadhya karuna, that Krishna prayed, it is not the fruit of the sadhana, but the sadhana will clean the heart. Shravana did chite, no, the heart, Shravana did chite, when the heart becomes purified, then Koraya Udoy, it will manifest. It means first we have to do the cleaning part. Now, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, we were observing his now Adil Bhaktiti's appearance there a few days ago. Now, you are saying, Bhakti means again and again cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. A big part is a <coughs> purification process. And Mahaprabhu himself has manifested this, has exemplified this by this lila of Gundicha Mandira Mahajanapa. <coughs> you know that during Ratha Yatra, no, Jagannath Charya is going from Sri Sri Mandir, which represents no, Kurukshetra or, Pur, or Dwarka, then goes to Gundicha Mandir at the other end of Temple Road, representing Vrindava. That temple is closed the whole year, nothing is happening, it's only used during that part on those few days when Jagannath is staying there. So during the whole year, nothing is happening, no worship. So, uh, yes, Mahaprabhu would, before uh, Rathayatra, before Jagannath coming, he would clean that whole temple with his associates. And our Acharya now commented, this represents cleaning the heart from all anathas before we can invite the Lord to sit in our heart. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 
Jai Jai Sri Ram 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 Jai